as they say, stay in your own lane. What's going on, guys? It's Robinson. I wanted to talk um, a little bit about, and I've been conversing with a lot of my clients and also interviewing you know, potential new clients. And I have a drastic, major concern that I see affecting both males and females. And I, I think this is a very important topic to talk about. Um, for those of you who are getting into the fitness lifestyle, and or who are having considerations about competing uh, or just you know long-term goals for health in terms of how you want your body to look, body fat, body weight, um, lifting, diet, nutrition, everything. I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this, but this journey of the fitness, of obtaining some sort of fitness lifestyle, whether it's to drop 15 pounds, whether it's to be powerlifting, whether it's to be a physique competitor of some sort, whether that's bikini, uh, you know, bodybuilding, physique, figure, uh, whatever it is, you need to understand that any part of this is a journey for you with a finish line that is never going to arrive. And what do I mean by that? Oh, you know, this journey is for you. Let's start there. Stop looking at people around you. Stop comparing yourself to people on Instagram. Stop worrying whether they're bulking or cutting, especially when they're cutting. Stop idolizing others when you don't know what's going on in their life. And, and, and here's the reason that I, I have this. Social media, in most instances, and there are a few people who show in, in every instance, but in most instances, is nothing but a highlight reel. So a lot of times you're comparing yourself to a guy or girl who are only showing pictures of themselves when they are stage ready. They never show you what they look like in the off season. And honestly, if you saw them in the off season, you wouldn't even recognize them, okay? So they're showing you stage shots all year round and you're saying, wow, this person's always lean. And they won't even tell you they're doing it. They won't even tell you like this is a flashback picture. This is like, oh, this was today. It's not. Um, so they'll only show you stage shots. So you're thinking that this man or this woman are staying that lean all year round. 99% of them are not. Okay. If they are, I would have major concerns about it for two reasons. One, most likely they're on drugs so they can sustain that level of leanness, and I'm not saying that makes them any more healthy, but they are using chemical enhancement to stay that lean. Or two, most likely they have some sort of severe disorder with either body dysmorphia, uh, the way they eat, uh, or where they're maintaining their bodies to the point where it's extremely unhealthy. And you should not model yourself after someone like that. And I've literally had this conversation with several people recently. And it's scary that, you know, people need to understand there is a photo shoot slash competition ready look, and there is an off season look, which means your body fat level and your body weight are gonna go up in the off season. And there's a reason for that. You have long-term goals in which you wish to add more muscle and get bigger and improve your physique and that is going to require a caloric surplus i'm not saying a drastic caloric surplus but a caloric surplus and two in the off season you want to have a healthy amount of body fat and the main reason for that is so that hormonally your body is in a healthy place and you want to stay there for an extended period of time because there are a lot of case studies showing that even when you get back to, let's say, your original level of body fat or body weight post-competition, even six, seven months post, your body is still not back to normal yet. Hormonally, you may look it, but you're not. 
Um, and anybody who's competed should agree with this statement. Your endurance and your energy levels and the way you would normally feel in an off season still aren't necessarily back to normal six to seven months post show, even if you get back to the same body weight post stage or body fat percentage post stage. So this just goes to show even if you feel, you know, you look like you're there, internally, you're not. So that's why I always suggest a longer off season. And for people who have never competed for, before, who are in these low caloric states of, you know, 1,000, 1,200, maybe 1,500 calories, you really need to work on pushing you know, your, your metabolic capacity up. Now, granted, that's gonna vary from individual to individual. Um, it's not even necessarily woman to woman, I, like woman to man. I know women who can out eat guys, their, their caloric capacity is way higher than a guy. But you need to get yourself in a healthy caloric state so that eventually when you, you get to that, cutting or dropping body fat will be way easier where your body will fight you way less on the way down. These are all important factors you need to consider in terms of where you are. And you need to be, honestly, you need to be realistic. And I think that's the problem is people aren't being realistic. They'll say they're following the diet, they'll say they're doing this, they're saying they're doing that, and they're really not. Calorically, they're all over the place. One day they might be at 1,000, one day they might be at 1,800, then they might be at 1,200. They're not hitting, let's say, you know, 1,500 every day consistently, then working to 1,600, and they'll be like, oh, well, you know, I'm eating instinctively now, and they start making excuses. No. If you have a goal, you have to be consistent. You have to work on it every day. Now, you know, if you're, let's say you're at 1,200, and the first goal is to get to, to 1,500 of calories, let's say and you're at 1495 and then 1510 or something like that. That's different because you're close to the number, you're averaging around the caloric intake you need for the week. The other thing is, once you start to put on a little bit of body fat and you start getting a little uncomfortable with not being as lean, you need to get over that immediately. And I know that's, you know, I know there's a mental game that goes into all that. But you need to understand the long-term effects and goals. So you need to get used to the fact that you are not going to be stage lean all year. Your walking around weight may be heavier than your stage weight, okay? And that's okay. And you need to take into consideration what that new off-season weight consists of. Now, is it all you're doing is socking on body fat? Or are you also putting on some lean muscle mass with it? So if you're used to walking around as a guy, as, uh, I don't know, stage weight 170, like me, that's why usually my stage weights are around 170-something pounds. And usually in my off-season, I'm walking around somewhere between 195 to 200. So that's 20-ish pounds overweight over stage weight and I'm okay with that and I'm smart with my reverse diet and I don't binge eat post show so that by the time I get to 195 as you've seen on my Instagram I still am visibly lean leaner than most because I was careful I really worked on adding lean muscle mass I worked on my metabolic capacity I tracked all of my macros I worked on everything for the long-term goal of when I compete again regardless of what my stage weight might be, that I will have made some sort of progress in terms of muscle maturity, uh, you know, my how striated I look, the amount of lean muscle mass I'm carrying, all those things that I expect in the long-term goal. I do not worry about, wow, you know, I, I feel kind of heavy, I, kind, I, I look fluffy, um, I don't like this look because I feel fat, oh, uh, well, so-and-so is leaner than me. I'm not ever focused on anybody else and that's what you need to develop when it comes to this is as they say stay in your own lane i was actually listening to a podcast the other day focus on yourself stay in your own lane focus on your goals focus on long-term goals stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and worry about you your body your journey is different than the people around you and you cannot compare somebody who just wants to look good for the summer or is in the process of competing to yourself in the off season who is not close to competing 
and, and, and go, well, they look like this and I need to do this because they're doing that. That's a mistake. That will distract you and hinder you from achieving the long-term goal, which is to make improvements to your physique. And I see a lot of people do this. They screw up their reverse or they screw up their diet or they're not sticking. And I'm not even saying, you know, eating clean or anything like that. They are not tracking their macros. They're not doing the caloric intake that they think they're doing. They're kind of like eating instinctively or flip-flopping all over the place or they're not sticking to the training plan the way they're supposed to. And they'll start going, well, uh, well now I don't look how I want to look. I'm going to do a mini cut seven months into this. No, no. Stick to the bulk. Stick to it. I'm not saying go crazy. I'm not saying go eat 3,000 calories when you're supposed to be eating 2,200. I'm saying slowly work on increasing calories over the time. Do it properly. And then your body should respond the way it's supposed to. And get used to off-season, long-term versus competing or summertime goals. It's totally, totally two different aspects that you're looking at here. So if your goal is to add muscle, get used to the fact you're going to be heavier in the off-season. Don't give a damn about who's looking cute for summer because your goal is to get bigger, stronger. All right, guys? That was my motivational speech for the day. I'll talk to you guys later.